It seems that Jeff Bezos hasn't had a smooth summer. His $7 million engine exploded into a fireball during a routine test last month. It's truly disappointing that after nearly a decade of research, the BE-4 engine still fails to operate reliably. This not only raised concerns about Blue Origin's production capacity, but it's also bad news for United Launch Alliance, which has always relied on rocket engine technology from other companies. So what exactly went wrong with Blue Origin's BE-4 engine, and what problems will ULA face? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Blue Origin, a privately owned aerospace company led by Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos, has faced significant obstacles after one of its BE-4 rocket engines exploded during testing. Something that Blue Origin doesn't seem to want to reveal publicly, but was broken by CNBC. The incident occurred on June 30th at a facility in West Texas. Those familiar with the matter state that the explosion occurred approximately 10 seconds into the test, resulting in the destruction of the engine and significant damage to the testing infrastructure. The previously planned engine was set to conclude testing in July and then be sent to Blue Origin's customer, United Launch Alliance, for deployment in their second Vulcan rocket launch. That launch, known as CERT-2, is meant to send Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane on an uncrewed cargo delivery mission to the International Space Station. The company's officially acknowledged the issue and is actively working to identify and assess the root cause of the incident. They stated that their team ran into an issue while testing Vulcan's Flight Engine 3. The spokesperson added, No personnel were injured and we're currently assessing the root cause. We already have proximate cause and are working on remedial actions. Despite that setback, Blue Origins expressed confidence in its ability to meet engine delivery commitments. They remain committed to their engines in West Texas, ensuring that they stay ahead of their customers' launch needs. Talking about Blue Origins' BE-4 engine, getting it ready for its first launch has already taken years longer than both Blue Origin and ULA anticipated when they announced the rocket development project in 2014. It has a thrust of 550,000 pounds, and engines intended for use not only for Vulcan's first stage booster, but also on Blue Origin's orbital class New Glenn rocket, which is projected to have its inaugural launch no earlier than 2024. Blue Origin secured agreements for multiple satellite launches using New Glenn, and NASA wants to use New Glenn to send two spacecrafts to Mars by the end of this year. If Blue Origin takes more time than expected to address the issues arising from its recent test failure, this could potentially have a domino effect on those missions. That's why there have been significant concerns for ULA regarding the future missions of the Vulcan rocket. Even the pair of engines that ULA successfully ignited in early June have now come under suspension due to a flawed system design. However, a ULA spokesperson has reassured that the testing issue with the BE-4 engine will not impact their plans for the Vulcan CERT-1 mission. The company also emphasized that the engines for CERT-1 has successfully passed acceptance testing and are qualified for launch. On July 11th, ULA CEO Tori Bruno discussed the June 30th incident in a series of tweets. The failure of the engine's acceptance test, or ATP, was way less interesting than it sounds, he said. They happen. That's why we acceptance test each component coming off the line before accepting delivery, Bruno said. He said he was very confident that the failure of the test was due to poor workmanship on that particular engine, rather than an overlooked flaw in the engine design. So he's adamant that it's very unlikely the incident will set back the timeline for CERT-1, currently scheduled for the fourth quarter. On the other hand, the certification mission is a crucial milestone for ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. While the BE-4 engine failure and acceptance testing may not directly impact CERT-1, ULA will need to successfully complete two launches with Vulcan before the U.S. Space Force will approve it for valuable national security missions. SpaceX's dominance in the launch market has also raised concerns about a potential monopoly, making the success of Vulcan even more critical for ULA. The recently assigned Space Force missions, all of which are scheduled to fly on Vulcan, further highlight the importance of its successful operation. ULA's currently operational rockets are retiring, leaving Vulcan as the primary vehicle for these missions. The industry, including competitors and customers, is closely watching the development of Vulcan as a key alternative to SpaceX. 
While CERT-1 may not be directly affected, CERT-2, which would involve subsequent launches, could face potential implications from the BE-4 engine's failure in acceptance testing. Addressing any possible concerns is critical to the future of Vulcan Centaur and ULA's competitiveness in the launch business. Equally significant is the issue of the upper stage of the Vulcan rocket, known as the Centaur-5. In March, during a structural test, the upper stage encountered an explosion, leading ULA to partially disassemble the first Vulcan rocket. ULA concluded that rectifying the problem would be relatively straightforward. Currently, they are conducting tests to determine whether adjusting the thickness of the steel walls in the upper stage provides a viable solution. According to Bruno, the leak that prompted the investigation into the Centaur 5 test article occurred during its 15th test at NASA's Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This was approximately a third of the number through the planned testing series, which typically requires around 45 tests to qualify the full range of flights for future Vulcan missions. The hydrogen tank in the Centaur 5 upper stage is about 40 feet long, has an 18-foot diameter, and is built from stainless steel that Bruno described as thinner than a dime, or thicker than a high-quality wedding invitation. It sits atop the liquid oxygen cryogenic tank, both are wrapped up in a long cylinder and separated by an intermediate bulkhead. The leak, lasting around four and a half minutes before the rupture, originated from the forward dome of the hydrogen tank. This dome consists of curved triangles with a top access door, similar in design to Centaur 3 used in Atlas V, but larger in size. During the investigation, it was discovered that a weld near the door experienced excessive load due to its geometry, contributing to the leak. Bruno emphasized that the issue observed in Centaur 5 caused by the combination of higher loads and slightly lower strength in the laser welds compared to the arc welds used in Centaur 3 was absent in smaller scale Centaur 3. However, if these factors had been the only ones present, the failure wouldn't have occurred. He also points back to the fact that this test article had performed 14 prior tests, which is considerably more testing and exposure to loads and more pressure cycles, and lots and lots more time of structure sitting under pressure than would ever happen in a single flight. So what's ULA's solution? Bruno explained that the solution to the issue involves reinforcing the design of the Centaur 5 upper stages dome. Approximately 300 pounds of reinforcements, including a ring doubler and 15 strip doublers, will be added to the dome of the Centaur 5 designated for the CERT-1 mission. Additionally, the milling process that had previously reduced part of the dome surface to 26 thousandths of an inch will be eliminated. Compared to the overall weight of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, the added 300 pounds account for roughly 25%. He mentioned that subsequent rockets following the first modified one will be approximately 150 pounds heavier. The implementation of the proposed fix is currently underway on the third Centaur 5, which is expected to be completed soon. This modified version will replace the Centaur 5 that was stacked with the Vulcan booster during the flight readiness firing test that they did last month. Bruno said that once these steps are finalized, they'll have concluded the qualification process for the vehicle, marking the final stage of their path to certification. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.